Hello everyone, bringing you the Mannequin of the Month for August 2022 today. As usual, the topic in this video has been chosen via a poll over on Patreon. And what we're looking at in this video is the mannequin as we have it set up here, a British soldier operating in Northern Ireland in the middle to late 1980s. And this allows to show some of the, the newer kit which have been introduced around this time. Uh, the mannequin is very bulky, we'll get onto a reason for that in a minute. Very spartan in terms of kit, we basically have the combat jacket and the helmet here. So we'll get into this now and talk about these various items in more detail. Up on top here we have the Mark VI ballistic nylon helmet, obviously being introduced as the standard combat helmet to replace the Mark IV steel helmet. So this is a reversion to the original practice the British Army had of adapting the combat helmet for public order, anti-riot duties, that sort of thing. The Mark IV had been fitted with a visor in the early days of Operation Banner. This wasn't found to be very suitable, so the Army actually introduced specialist anti-riot helmets adapted from motorcycle helmets, both the Stadium and the Cromwell helmet with a visor fitted to them for anti-riot duties. This is obviously a step forward in that you're now being able to use the combat helmet with its uh, ballistic properties as an anti-riot helmet as well. So we have a visor fitted to this. There is some adaption required to do this, and we'll talk a little bit about that during the video. I'm make, planning to make a video looking at this in more detail going forward anyway. The smock, the, the basic uniform worn here is the 1984 pattern. This is the newer pattern of smock. You still see the earlier 1968 pattern in use at this time, but gone for the, the newer pattern here uh, as an example of what was being worn at the time. You'd see a mix and match right the way through into the 90s. So we have the bellows pockets on the chest here. That was a, a, a supposed improvement from the 1968 pattern, but in terms of manufacture, the quality wasn't there. So these weren't as strong as they should have been, uh, the bellows pockets. And then the same at the bottom here, the two lower pockets are, are bellows as well. You can see that there. Otherwise made in a cotton modal mix, which had been the same for the latter production of 1968 pattern. So it's no longer a pure cotton garment. It's a, a cotton mix. And that's what we have on the mannequin here is the, the basic uniform. We'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the other details. So looking at the right hand side of the mannequin here, we'll start at the top with the helmet. You can see details of the visor and the way it fixes onto the helmet there. We have this black plastic sort of valance that runs around the top, which basically uh, provides almost a, a semi seal against the helmet there, stops stuff dropping down behind the visor. The visor itself, of course, is made of clear perspex. It can be removed from the helmet. You have this twist locking mechanism here, so you can flip that D-ring down and you can twist that and it will unlock from the plate that's been attached to the side of the helmet here. You can just see that here. You do have to adapt the helmet in order to take the visor. You have to fit brackets onto the side here. You have to be screwed on in order for the helmet, uh, in order for the visor to be attached to the helmet. So the, the Mark VI as it's made has uh, the uh, feature, has the holes there to fit these brackets, but they don't come as standard. So you do have to adapt the Mark VI in order to take the visor. Obviously in this instance worn without a cover. You do sometimes see them certainly later on worn with covers where holes have been made to allow the visor to be attached to these brackets underneath. The side of the uh, smock here, we can see the epaulette here, sleeves coming down, see Velcro closure at the bottom of the sleeve there. On the back of the arm, we have the dressing pocket. Now this is a new feature. Previous to this, the dressing pocket was down on the leg of the trousers. It's now up on the back of the arm here, and this contains a joint service dressing in there. So dressings commonly carried, obviously there was a, a risk of, uh, serious risk of injury and having a dressing on you was a, a, a sensible thing to do. So dressing in the dressing pocket on the back of the arm there. Looking at the back of the mannequin here, another detail to talk about with the helmet is the fitting of the nape protector. Now this is another way the Mark VI would be adapted for public order or anti-riot duties. Fits into the helmet using Velcro. You also have to loop the chin strap through it. So it's a little bit of an involved process fitting it. Stiffened with wire, it's padded, and it has this sort of quilted, light, quilted stitching around it. Obviously provides some protection to the back of the neck from incoming blows. That's the idea of it. And it, in that regard, it's similar to modern police anti-riot helmets. So a step forward in terms of personal protection for British soldiers serving in Northern Ireland at the time. So we have the nape protector on the helmet there. The combat smock, there's not a huge amount to talk about here. Obviously the back of the smock is very plain. Should give you a nice shot of the DPM cloth there. This darker DPM print you get when obviously printed onto the, the cotton modal material, you get a slightly different tone and there were slight changes in the printing process as well. Uh, but this is very uh, indicative of sort of the 1984 pattern and the late production 1968 pattern, this particular color of DPM. So that's the back of the mannequin. Looking at the left hand side of the mannequin, there isn't a huge amount to talk about here. Obviously the left hand side of the helmet, mirror image of the other side, 
nothing more to talk about there really. The arm of the smock coming down in place of the dressing pocket we had on the back of the arm on the other side. We have a pen pocket on the arm here with a flap over it. So let's have a look at the externals of the mannequin here. We've had a look at the smock and the helmet. We're going to take this off now and have a look at what's worn underneath. That does form an integral part of what we're talking about here. One final thing to mention while looking at the, the outside here is the lack of any belt kit. Now this is common to see in the latter 1980s, the mid, mid to late 1980s. Various items could be carried in the pockets if required, depending on the specific operation, but it's very common to see from men on urban patrol, particularly vehicular patrols, no belt kit carried, or maybe just the water bottle on a belt, for example. Radios and so forth could be carried in, their own, in pockets or on their own, in their own carriers on, on straps over the shoulder. So, as I say, very light in terms of the kit carried. Uh, the same is true of urban vehicular checkpoints and so forth. It's very common to see chaps with no belt kit at all. Just the combat uniform, obviously the, the helmet with visor, and as we're going to see, body armour. We'll have a look at that now. So with the smock removed, we can see why the mannequin looked so bulky, and that's because the body armour, in this instance, is worn underneath the smock. This is the Mark II body armour, or improved Northern Ireland body armour, which had been introduced in the early 1980s, and it's designed to be worn underneath the smock, in contrast to those patterns which had gone before. It also offers greatly improved protection in that you have a ceramic plate at the front and one at the rear. These protect the heart. So a great step forward in protection and also concealed being worn underneath the smock. And that's why the mannequin looks so bulky. As I say, it's something that noted at the time. You could still tell when people were wearing this. As I say, the protection greatly improved and overall just an improved design. You don't have the join down the front. It's actually round at the side underneath the arm. I've talked about this previously on the channel in some detail, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. The body armour, of course, worn over the jersey heavy wool in this instance and the KF shirt, which you might be able to just see at the collar here. The standard sort of uh, the standard base layers, you could say, underneath the combat uniform there. We'll turn this around now and have a look at the back so you can see the plate mounted on the back as well. You notice they're slightly offset to offer that protection to the heart. So looking at the back of the mannequin here, we can see the plate offset there again to protect the heart. Just show you here, these are removable. Lift up the Velcro tabs there and it will just pull up out of the pocket there. You can see this side away from body handle with care. Handle with care are very important. The corners of these square plates were prone to damage and if damaged, obviously they do lose some of their ballistic protection that they offer. So they just slot into the, these nylon pockets here and then Velcro tabs come down to keep them securely in place. That's the back of the, the body armour there. So I hope you found this interesting looking at this. Obviously op Operation Banner is one of my particular areas of interest. So getting to talk about it again in a mannequin video is always, is always good. So thank you to those who voted over on Patreon for this topic. Hopefully, as I say, the kit here, is, it's been interesting looking at how this goes together. This sort of latter development of, of British Army kit, the body armour, the helmet and visor for use in Northern Ireland on public order and urban patrol duties, essentially. So there we are. That's the mannequin of the month for August 2022. If you have enjoyed watching this and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel and you'd perhaps like to vote on the mannequin of the month each month, Patreon is linked down below. There's PayPal there as well. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using the, both of those methods. It's very much appreciated. As I always say, thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, where there will of course be photographs of this posted up, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And as always, there's an email address down there in the description as well if you'd prefer to get in touch with me that way. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.